Hello, uh, my name is Hugo Fillion. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Flare. Um, I'd like to introduce you to a product that I think will become one of the largest use cases for XRP over the next months and years. Uh, and that is the ability to stake your XRP, retain long-side exposure, and earn a yield. And the protocol is called Firelight, and it's powered by Flare. Firelight is a staking platform built on Flare by the highly experienced DeFi professionals at an entity called Centura. We will go through what it enables in more detail in a moment, but the key thing to understand is it allows you to use your XRP to secure services, which we call, creatively enough, Secured Service Networks, SSNs. Uh, these services can be built on Flare, on XRPL, on Ethereum, on SUI, or wherever. So it's broadly chain agnostic. As with all staking models, the quid pro quo for providing security in the form of your XRP is receiving some share of the protocol emissions or revenue. And hence, by staking your XRP, you can obtain a yield. There's three key points here to set the context. Flare is purpose-built, Flare as a network is purpose-built from the ground up to be able to robustly acquire data from external systems. This is critical for securing services and the ability to demonstrate to the staking contract on Flare that a violation of the protocol rules has occurred so that events, uh, so that slashing events can take place. Flare's protocols are ideal for doing this robustly. When your XRP is staked, you receive a liquid staking token uh, that acts as a receipt for your staking position, and you can use it in DeFi on Flare or potentially elsewhere. Um, and it's always simple to exit the liquid staking token back to get your XRP back on the XRP ledger. So Firelight, the staking protocol that is being built on Flare, enables varying degrees of interaction for different parties. Uh, so for both individuals and institutions, uh, staking of XRP is available in terms of being able to put your XRP to work in infrastructure. Um, and we'll come on to use cases around that in a moment. But Firelight will also enable institutions to put their XRP to work in quite sophisticated financial products. And that's a, a kind of separate but interesting and related area. Um, so, as I said, Firelight is powered by Flare. And specifically, Flare is built as a network with enshrined data protocols. This means that all of our validators contribute to our price oracles, which is called the Flare Time Series Oracle and our Web 2 and Web 3 Oracle, which is called the Flare Data Connector. So on Flare, you get prices, and you get Web 2 and Web 3 data, and these things can be ingested by smart contracts on Flare to do things and trigger things. Um, Flare Data Connector will enable, effectively, the secure bridging of XRP. Uh, we use TEEs to enable the full representation of Flare's validator set uh, on uh, a partner chain such as the XRPL. Uh, to, to, so for you to understand uh, how this works, we have 100 validators at Flare, but the XRPL only allows a multi-sig signer set of 32. So we use TEEs to effectively compress our 100 validators into uh, a set of signatures that can be used with the multi-sig set um, on, uh, on the XRPL, and that way we can reflect the full stake weight of Flare. Uh, and that's really critical to where we want to go, uh, because uh, that's how we derive decentralized security. Um, fundamentally, the TEs provide the mechanism uh, to achieve that stake representation, uh, but it's the FTC itself that enables the smart contracts on Flare to get information from the XRPL, and hence to be able to manage the bridge. Uh, Firelight will also leverage the FTC to acquire information from secured service networks into the staking smart contracts on Flare, forming the basis of how XRP stake can confer security onto an external service. Uh, the FTC currently runs every 90 seconds, although 
as we start leveraging TEEs, we'll be able to reduce that down to essentially real time. Um, so, what is securing something with stake that is not uh, from the original application? What does this mean? Um, we've been talking in the abstract about how the FTC works, um, and you know, let's try and drill down a little bit as to, as to how uh, this might be used. So, say some external service uh, sets up and they want to leverage XRP for their security. Uh, now, let's say for argument's sake, it's a new XRPL sidechain um, that wants to use XRP in a proof-of-stake-like security mechanism. Uh, this XRP would be staked on Flare through Firelight. The data with regards to the stake composition and node composition is relayed from Flare to that sidechain. This conveys the e economic security of that staked XRP to the sidechain nodes. And under the happy path, the nodes operate well and provide revenue in the form of native token or protocol fees. Um, this is not something that's set by Firelight. This is up to the builders of the protocol. Um, however, when one of these nodes that you're staked to breaks the protocol rules, say it has a liveness issue, such as node uptime goes below 95% on some rolling average, uh, the XRP stake associated with that node uh, can be slashed by proving through the Flare data connector that this event has occurred. And it's important to note here, because I, I know that the XRP community will be very concerned about their principal stake of XRP, uh, slashing does not have to take away XRP. Uh, there are forms of slashing where you can just slash accrued rewards that have not yet been distributed. Um, again, this is a fundamental choice of secured service operators as to how they wish to design their protocol. Um, but I definitely advocate for uh, mostly for reward slashing rather than principal slashing, as this provides the lowest risk option for stakers, so ultimately you'll end up with more stake. Uh, and this type of staking and security that we've described here uh, works for tasks where there's some objective truth, uh, such as node uptime being less than 95%. Uh, this can be proven and it can be agreed on Flare through the FTC, and hence slashing can be applied. Uh, but there's another way to use that stake, um, which I think is quite interesting. Uh, and this is for more subject... We've covered the objective case. Uh, now, this is a, a little different. It's for, for things we want to do, but we cannot find an objective criteria against which to measure them, i.e. subjective events or subjective things. We already see this in action on Flare with the FTSO, um, because the FTSO is actually a voting mechanism on prices. That is because there is an objective price of where, uh, what an asset's uh, value is. Uh, they trade on hundreds of uh, venues. They have different volumes on each venue. They're all slightly different price on each venue. Um, and we can extend this logic out to other forms of information. Uh, a simple example here is a prominent use case in the industry, uh, the case of prediction markets on events where there is either no official source of data or there may be conflicting opinions on what has happened. Uh, here, we can use a weight of stake to settle a market, either in a collective sense by staking the governance token of Firelight, um, if, if that's something that people want to build, uh, or you can directly stake XRP against a specific event. Uh, and that, I think, is a, a very interesting additional use case of beyond the objective into the subjective. Um, so I hope at this point I've laid the groundwork uh, so that you get an intuition of how XRP staking through Firelight works. Um, now let's have a look at the broad categories of where this can be applied. I said that there's objective cases and subjective cases. In the objective cases, we're broadly talking about networks and infrastructure, things like DPIN, L2s, sidechains, verifiable compute, AI. It effectively captures a very large segment of where this whole industry is going. Uh, in the subjective cases, we start to get more into more financially focused use cases um, with 
most likely the broadest category here being events. Uh, for instance, I see a strong use case for providing insurance with XRP as the backing asset. Um, again, ensuring both on-chain and off-chain events. I think there are other financial products, such as options, which could be settled through the use of staked XRP. Uh, lastly, there are specific data tasks, which I find quite interesting, such as labeling data. Um, yesterday, we saw that Meta acquired 49% of Scale AI. Um, their business is simply labeling data for large AI labs. I think that's a perfect example of where you could have a dispute mechanism on chain uh, to dispute a particular label of an item of data. Um, I think blockchain works really, really well to aggregate that global knowledge. Um, uh, Meta bought that for, I think, 49% for 17 billion. So I think there's a market there. Um, so, you know, we now need to talk about, okay, once you state, what happens? Well, you get a liquid staking token. Through Firelight, you'll be able to stake directly to a particular node or service that you want. Uh, but in reality, most people will opt uh, to have the stake managed by a third party, uh, i.e. you can deposit your stake in a vault uh, that the third party could administer, importantly, under restrictions imposed by smart contract, i.e. they can't just take the XRP out of the vault and do whatever they want with it. Um, the, the vault is restricted to being able to stake and being able to, you know, if effectively they should, they, if built correctly, they won't be able to rug you. Um, and obviously, Firelight are building the first liquid staking token. So this vault that you stake to, it emits a receipt of your staking position, which is called a liquid stake token. Um, so you stake your XRP through Firelight, you receive an EVM-compatible LST, which derives its value from the staked XRP, plus the accrued rewards. Uh, LSTs have become effectively the lifeblood of DeFi, with about $19 billion worth in existence. And to give you an example why, X why LSTs are powerful, uh, let's say you want to borrow stable coins against your XRP. Uh, when you borrow, you pay a yield. Uh, well, if the asset that you were borrowing in is also yielding, you're offsetting your cost of borrowing, uh, either partially or completely. And so this allows you really quite considerable financial flexibility whilst remaining fundamentally exposed to the upside of XRP. And I think that's a, a great use case. Um, so just want to talk about broadening out the risk spectrum. We've been talking about objective staking and staking to resolve subjective events. Uh, there gets to be, you know, the, the core concept of staking is I have a vault, I have some value in it, I can use that value to do something. Um, and the Firelight infrastructure, together with Flare's core data protocols, allow for potential use cases that can extend, essentially, the concept of staking out across the risk spectrum. Um, Staking to infrastructure is one kind of risk, uh, probably the lowest risk in forms of staking. Uh, staking to a subject to resolve a subjective event is probably a slightly higher risk. Um, but as you know, this industry fleshes out uh, and using Flare's data protocols, uh, you know, and a, a combination of vault structures, we can create a whole panoply of on-chain financial products. Uh, the most interesting to my mind, as I said, are insurance on both real-world events and on-chain events. And finally, I think you know, this space really needs a proper options protocol. And I think having a vault for collateral against an options protocol uh, is probably the best way to actually create an on-chain options market, which heretofore has more or less eluded the entire industry. Um, additionally, so certain vaults will literally not be suitable from a regulatory perspective uh, or a moral point of view uh, to people that are not highly sophisticated investors. And so staking is going to bifurcate into essentially categorizations where everyone can participate and categorizations where it's broadly really only applicable to institutions. Uh, and I think that's an acceptable way to, to think about it. I really don't want to be offering, I, don't, I really don't want to be building something that is offering a sophisticated financial product to people that should not be engaging in that. Um, Okay, so why are we building this for XRP? Why do we choose XRP? Well, I think we've seen that, you know, the first thing is there's proven demand uh, for staking on other networks. Uh, there's been Bitcoin staking through Babylon. There's been Ethereum staking through Eigenlayer. Uh, but XRP has some unique characteristics in the market. It's really highly liquid. Um, and uh, a very liquid asset is very good for security because ultimately uh, liquidity and security are quite related. Um, and it's also very useful for the financial applications of staking. 
third largest asset in the space, excluding Tether, which I don't think like, you know, stable coins, uh, they don't quite count as decentralized assets. Um, and critically, XRP doesn't have native staking, and it has a low cost of capital, which is highly attractive to both developers uh, and users. Um, so that's why we think XRP is a value as a staking asset, but we also think reflexively staking is of value to XRP uh, and to the XRP ledger. It's clear that now is the time for XRP growth. As XRP grows and as more use cases come to the XRP ledger, more services are going to be needed. Um, and what better asset to secure those services than XRP? Uh, importantly, Firelight gives XRP holders the abil ability to earn yield on their XRP whilst remaining liquid and directional, but always being able to go back to XRP quickly. So why Flare? Well, staking requires data and smart contracts for which Flare is purpose-built. Um, the bridging of XRP requires data. The slashing of stake with regards to secured services required data. Determining events in the external world with regards to financial use cases requires data. There couldn't really be a more perfect layer on which to build this product. Um, additionally, the downstream use of XRP LSTs requires a fully fleshed out DeFi ecosystem. As you may have followed, Flare has been diligently making all of uh, putting in place all of the correct pieces uh, to ensure that XRP Phi, including Firelight staking, uh, comes to a successful fruition on the network. So in summary, through Firelight on Flare, you'll be able to stake your XRP and earn a yield. Stakers will be able to receive a liquid stake token, which represents their staking position and can be used in DeFi. Staking opportunities span from infrastructure through subjective questions to complex financial products. Risk levels are always at the discretion of the user, and it's always simple to exit back to XRP. And now for something different. So today, I'm thrilled to announce that Flare has set up a definitive strategic partnership between Vivo Power and Flare to deploy 100 million US dollars in XRP for institutional yield generation on Flare. This is a major milestone, not just for Vivo Power, but for the broader XRP ecosystem. It marks the first major execution of Vivo Power's new corporate strategy and a powerful signal that XRP can play a central role in institutional treasury management. At the heart of this partnership is Flare's F-Asset system. It's a non-custodial protocol that allows XRP to be used in smart, contracts, smart contract applications without compromising its native security. And this deployment is the first institutional scale validation of that. In many ways, it establishes Flare as this essential programmable utility layer for the XRP ecosystem. What makes this strategy especially powerful is that it's regenerative. Vivo Power will generate yield through protocols on Flare, like Firelight, and then reinvest that yield back into XRP. This creates a perpetually compounding, capital-efficient approach to managing treasury assets. Well, why Flare? Uh, Vivo Power did not take this decision lightly. It came after a rigorous evaluation of Flare's infrastructure, infrastructure that's been built specifically to meet institutional grade standards for security, compliance, and performance. Uh, and it's not just about one protocol. Flare's broader DeFi ecosystem is ready for institutional scale. The launch of the USDT Zero stablecoin, for example, brought in over $90 million in new total value locked. Clear proof that the network can attract deep liquidity and real usage. To be clear, Flare is not a replacement for the XRP ledger. Instead, it complements it, extending XRP's utility into compliant, programmable, yield-generating finance. If you're an institution exploring how to bring digital assets like XRP into your treasury or yield strategy, we'd love to talk. I'll be around after this session. Come find me or a member of the Flare team, and let's explore what's possible together. Thank you.